What's up, everybody? <laughs> it is I. It is, it is her. So, let's just get this on out the way. Uh, last time that we were on, it was Mel and me. Today, it's me and, and T. T. This is my daughter, everybody. It's y'all first time seeing her. So, let's just go ahead and adjust, uh, uh, address the elephant in the room. This right here. Last time we had on the uh, the Bucks jersey, right? We had on the uh, the Orlando Pirates jersey, and so that that made for a really rebu- a robust conversation on the uh, on the on our comment section on the video. And of course, a lot of people, most people, were on our side because you know they're really big fans of the Orlando Pirates. And of course, I'm just laughing just thinking about mm-hmm. this because of the rivalry that takes place there. So. We representing for Joe Berg South up in this piece, right? And uh, this is the team that's actually closest to us based upon where we live there. But, you know, we're Americans, right? So just give me a break. I, I, I knew that this would become an issue. And, of course, once we're over there, we're going to get this whole thing figured out. But just kind of see this as being in fun, Mazanzi, okay? Uh it it is what it is. It's a cool jersey. I mean, it's really cool. Right? I, y'all, I like this one better. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. I I like the look of this one better. It we is. went through a lot to get that other one though. Yeah, we and searched I, high and low for the other. Yeah, so we'll 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 get to that. We'll get to that in the thing here. But I just I just want to get this out the way, everybody. Just just work with us here, okay? Uh, I love. All of the teams, I think they're cool jerseys. It gives me a chance to showcase this kind of stuff on this side of the ocean. And uh, it makes for really good conversation pieces. And it really does help to promote South Africa, right? <clears throat> At the end of the day. Yeah. It really does because, you know, soccer, as we call it over here, is a growing sport, right? But it's it's long been big over there. And so, uh, you know, it just presents a different view for people to say, hey, man, they got some really, you know, cool soccer jerseys over there. And let's mm-hmm. let's explore what the teams are doing over there, right? And who knows, maybe hopefully they're beyond like the World Cup and stuff like that, they'll get a chance to compete against each other. Uh, but anyway, so that's what it is. Yep, Kaiser Chiefs today, everybody. Next time y'all y'all might see a Sundowns jersey because I got two of those. I got the, I got a couple of those. So, but anyway, um, so the reason that I brought T on uh, because she made the last trip with me. Melanie did not go the last time uh, Mel and me were there was back in February. And so when we uh, purchased our place over there, um, she was just not able to go. Yeah. Because she was she was working and then she was still in, in school finishing up her, uh, her master's degree because she is a nurse. Registered <laughs> nurse. So uh, she just wasn't able to go. And so all the other times, it's either been her work schedule or her school and stuff. So now we finally got to the point where we can get her on the ground over there so that she can see what South Africa is like, specifically Joe Burr, uh, because eventually, you know, she's going to have to take that property over over there and, and manage it and spend time back and forth. And so, you know, she has a permanent connection uh, to South Africa as well, as well as my son. Who, uh, who has been there before. But, uh, yeah, so that's what it is. So I, I just wanted to, to get her over there, and uh, that's what it that's what it was. And so we went uh, into September. Yeah. We, we, we figured out about six days. We looked at her vacation schedule and stuff like that. And so we decided we would spend about a week over there uh, at the end of September. So that's what we did. So when we started this thing out, we probably should have known that this was going to be an interesting trip because we had some bad omens, right? We had from some, we had the get go. From, from the get go, we had some bad omens. So uh, we went through the process of booking booking the trip, um, and so we ended up having to book our trip separately. Like I booked through a travel agency, and then she booked her flight directly through the airline. Through the airline, right? Yeah. Because we flew Qatar, yeah, Airways over this time, yeah. Uh, normally. She's a Delta person. I am a Delta girly through and through. <laughs> right. But Delta was charging too much. So. Yeah. We decided to deviate and we paid for it. Yeah, we for paid it. for it. Not necessarily financially. <laughs> 
in, in a way we kind of did, but you know, the flights were a little bit cheaper, a little yeah. bit less expensive. Yeah. Because Delta, Delta, y'all have got to get it. I, you know, every video that I make now, I have to talk talk at Delta. Delta, y'all got to get get it together, man, because the prices are just too ridiculous. They, they're beyond. They're, they're kind of disrespectful. Yeah. You know, and so uh, we would love to fly Delta because it's based right out of here, out of our home uh, hometown of Atlanta. Yeah. Uh, but sometimes it's just not possible. And because we have to travel back and forth so much over there, uh, multiple times a year, we have to work out what's best, what makes sense financially for us. Because we got we to gotta keep this thing going, y'all. Uh, so that's what we did. So we booked, our, we booked our flights different, and we tried to do everything at the same time. She was on her laptop. I was on my laptop. Uh, just trying to make sure we picked the same seat so that they would be next to each other. Uh, and that type of thing and we thought we had it all together and then I get a notification that my through the travel agency that they weren't able to secure my seats um, even though I paid for it you know I, I paid the cost up front and we were so-called sitting to each sitting next to each other and so it turns out that they gave my seats to somebody else because of the way that the system works with the travel agency and all this kind of crazy stuff but needless to say, we ended up in a situation where we weren't sitting together. I didn't even have seats. Yeah. And so I had to, it took me about maybe another three weeks from the time that I had, we initially booked the reservation to get some seats. And then we, I, would ha I was having to work with the travel agency and stuff and the airline. I think I had to call them directly. But long story short, we ended up kind of getting seats. Oh, you know what? No, we didn't. We didn't sit together the whole way, the whole way there. So, well, our first leg, so we had two legs. We right. had to fly to, from Atlanta to Boston and then Boston to Qatar and then Qatar to Johannesburg. So that was um, the plan. That was least. the plan, at least. Right. So on our flight up to Boston, we were able technically to sit next to each other. We weren't supposed to, but there were so many empty seats. The flight attendant right. was like, hey, your dad can come up here and sit with you. So that worked out. But then from from that point, we weren't sitting next to each other. It was just we were just happy to be on the same plane. Right. Right. <laughs> So, so we got to the day of departure and of all things, a hurricane hits, right? And I knew that we were going to be up against the clock. I'm like, if we can just get out of Atlanta because the hurricane was so big, we don't get hurricanes really in this part of Georgia. We're not impacted by hurricanes because it's mostly on the coast. Yeah. And the state is so big where you don't really have to worry about it because yeah. we're on the interior, kind of like Johannesburg is. In, in South Africa, right? The location, our locations are very similar geographically as far as the, the land mass is concerned. But this time, because of, I'm sure, climate change, which is a global phenomenon, these hurricanes are getting bigger and more destructive. So we had this hurricane reach the entire portion of the state where we live. And so the morning that we were supposed to fly out, we got up about 3.30 in the morning or something. Yeah. We left out 3.30 yeah. in the morning. Heading to the airport. Our flight was at 6 on the dot. At 6 in the morning. But by the time we got to the airport uh, and checked in and everything, we got these notifications that our flight was going to be delayed. Flight was delayed by like, I think, five hours initially, yeah. something like that. And then, so we knew then, because of the fact that we had connecting flights, we had a connecting flight from Boston to Qatar and then from Qatar to Johannesburg, there was no way for us to make those flights. So now we're trying to figure out what are we going to do because our, our trip was in danger at that point. We were contemplating. I started looking around for other airlines to maybe try to, because I'm like, if we can just get to Boston yeah. and catch our flight to Qatar, then the rest of the way would be okay. Yeah. But then the hurricane just caused so many issues that everything was screwed up. And so we couldn't we couldn't get a flight to Boston. So we, we, had, to, we had to wait. We had to Stick wait it out. out. We had to stick it out, and so our flight was was delayed until later on that morning, I think, or eleven that afternoon, something, 11 like eleven thirty, maybe. And, and we caught that flight. It wasn't delayed further beyond that, no. was it? Mm -hmm. Okay, but yes, but by that time, we knew that we would miss our flight, and they told us, they told us basically, get to Boston, and then we'll get things figured out once you get there. But it didn't quite work <laughs> out that way, so that was another surprise. So as we got to Boston, and then we had a whole other situation that they couldn't get us to Qatar. And then they told us that here's how we can do it. Remember what happened? Yeah. Um, so one of the first suggestions was they put us on two totally different flights. 
because they didn't have on our flight we were supposed to or the next Qatar Airways flight that was available they didn't have two seats and we said we need to fly together especially with this being my first time going all the way to South Africa um, so at first they suggested one of you get on the flight to Qatar and go to Johannesburg and the other one can get on a flight to London and via go to British Johann Airways via, via British Airways right and go to Johannesburg and y'all will land in Johannesburg about the same, about time, same time but you'll take two completely different routes to get there and so we were like absolutely not that that's out of the question that's, that's yeah just not gonna work <laughs> yeah so they said so they were gonna put us on two different airlines Take us to two different countries, and you know, you're talking 14 hour flights, yeah, going to the other side of the world, yeah. and, and that that just it was just so crazy. It was just so crazy. And we left on a Thursday morning, and so ultimately, what ended up happening was I was I was so bad, and I was just trying to keep from just melting down and going off on and cursing everybody out. Because I mean, when you need somebody to do something for you, that's not the time to yeah. to get rude. But it was hard to just maintain my composure through the whole thing because it, you know you you might imagine, right? So ultimately, what ended up happening was this: they said somehow they they somehow. worked it out, <laughs> and I think it's because they saw I was really yeah. upset about things, and so they worked it out and they got us on. We ended up flying British Airways. Yeah. To Johannesburg. Now we booked through Qatar Airways, but Qatar somehow works some magic with British Airways. Maybe they have some partnership. They're under the same umbrella. Okay. So you know how airlines you have like uh One World and the Sky Team and all I, of that. I, I don't one. know. Oh, okay. She travels a whole lot more. <laughs> so than airlines, they all have kind of their families that they fall underneath. Okay. They're partner airlines, they're called. So Qatar Airways and British Airways, they fall underneath the same family. So they can kind of talk to each other in that way, in a sense. Um, so we were able to fly British Airways. We, we flew to London right. from Boston and right. then from London to Johannesburg, but that's how they were able to work that out. Right. But we were sitting there for a good, I don't know, at least 20 minutes going right. back and forth, trying to figure things out in the moment as seats were disappearing. Exactly. Um, in yeah. the process in real time. So yeah. it was very stressful. So millennials, millennials, y'all know all this extra stuff like that, like the details of the umbrellas of the airlines. We don't care about that type of stuff. Just get me, I'm going to pay you my money, get me to the damn destination, and I'm good, right? <laughs> so so we ended up detouring to London. So we, we, we had a 10-hour layover in London. So while we were in London, England, uh, in the UK, we just... We took that time and we went into downtown London, the central district. Yeah, we made the most of it. We made the most of it. So yeah. we got a chance to go to Buckingham Palace. Yeah. Uh, you know, took some pictures there. Um, the double decker bus. Double decker bus tour. Yeah. We went across yeah. London Bridge. Yeah. And it was not falling down like the song says. <laughs> London Bridge is falling down, falling down. I don't know if y'all learned that that song in South Africa uh, when you're kids in, in school, uh, primary school, I guess it would be. Uh, so yeah, so we spent, we had a good 10 hours in London, so we got a chance to do some sightseeing and stuff, and we ate, you know, at the, rest, at the restaurant there and stuff, and ultimately we, we boarded our flight, and we got to Johannesburg Sunday, Sunday morning. morning. Yeah. It was about maybe 7.30 Sunday yep. morning. Yeah. My, my oh, really? All right, so we're here. Finally. Good Me and speech. T, O.R. Tembo. Johannesburg, South Africa. Yeah, so we're gonna head to customs now. We didn't go, go down this side. We'll end it. Yeah, by 7.30 Sunday morning, we left on Thursday. So yeah. it took us two. We were supposed to be there. We were supposed to be there Saturday yeah. afternoon. Yeah. So our plan was to get the rental car and obviously go to our place there, kind of relax. Uh, actually, we might not have had time to relax. Just might have had time to shower and get ready to go out because I, I was going to to take her out to you know to to see a couple places or whatever and, and of course you know Johannesburg is still pretty much new to me so there's a lot that we haven't seen as far as hanging out and stuff like the hot spots you know go maybe catch some live music you know have a you know drink or two or something like that that was the plan for Saturday night but that 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 did not happen because we didn't get into Sunday morning so now we're on the compressed time schedule because we were leaving that Wednesday yeah Right on October second, yeah. so we didn't, we just didn't have a lot of time there. So Sunday, I figured, okay, we still got Sunday. I said we can, you know, we go go to Soweto, 
uh, and I, I wanted to take her to see a, a couple things definitely. So we went to the to the Mandela House uh, in Soweto. So we started out at um, we went to Soweto Towers mm -hmm. over in in, in, in Orlando. Mm -hmm. Um, what's the name of the what's the name of the the bar area there where they were having Heritage Festival? I I can I can't remember. The I name. can't remember the name, but we we were gonna go into uh uh into the Heritage Festival, but then they told us it was we weren't planning to. But they told us it was gonna be like a hundred rand to get in, and then twenty rand for this. And I was like, I just didn't, and it you know yeah. it was probably legit, but I, I it was spur of the moment. Yeah. So I was like, man, are we getting shaken down? Right. <laughs> you yeah. know, are yeah. we getting the getting the the U.S. discount, right? Or something like that, and we might not have been, but that was my thought in the moment because yeah. I wasn't prepared. We weren't for expecting it. that. We weren't expecting it. Yeah. So I was like, I, I would have liked to, you know, have, a, and I've never seen it either. I didn't know what it was, but we just told it was African Heritage, you know, African Heritage Festival, a celebration or whatever. So oh, maybe next time we'll get a chance to see that though. Yeah. De definitely we will in the future. Um, but again, just keep in mind, you know, we're we're in the situation we had just gotten there. We were just now try to figure out what are we going to do you know, to spend our time while we have our time here. Um, so that's what we did. You know, we, we hung over there for a little bit, uh, got a couple pictures, like I said, in front of the, the Soweto Tower. They, they are always painting those things. I'm telling yeah. you, mm -hmm. I wonder how often they, they, they paint they paint them because it seems like they change every time we're there, which is cool, though. Um, so we went from there, and then we drove over to uh, the Mandela House. Uh, and so we got a chance to visit that. So, what well, you have any impressions about that or about the Mandela House? The Mandela House was nice. Um, I just, it's always interesting to imagine a person living in that situation okay. and seeing the bullet holes in, in the, in the, the side of the, of the house. house yeah. yeah, it's just like, oh my goodness, I cannot believe like these conditions that he was living under. So, it was definitely a cool experience to be able to stand in that and see where he grew up. Um, one of the where other he, things where he lived, yeah, where he where lived. He lived yeah. Um, During the struggle. what I wasn't expecting was the the uh, the people who watch your car. <laughs> oh, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. When we were trying to find some place to park, yeah, that was the shakedown. <laughs> yeah, that was that was a shakedown right around the corner from Mandela's house. We we were on one of the side streets park, and uh, yeah, she wasn't prepared for that. I mean, of course, I've kind of dealt with it before, but the, the guys. You know, they told us to park right there. And I don't know if they live there. I'm assuming they live there on the block there. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I didn't want to do too much walking. So, I, you know, I played the game. I was like, all right, it's, it's cool. I know what it is, yeah. right? You know, because you just want to make sure. It was a rental car, you know, but you want to make sure that your stuff is taken care of. Yeah. I don't want to come back and have the windows broken or anything like yeah. that. It's like, you know, so, you know, it, was, it wasn't much. You know, like, hey, I would have paid the same to park someplace else or whatever. Not yeah. the same. But I, you know, I could have paid to park someplace, but I just like cool. The brothers were, they were cool. And then they yeah. tried to, what, what, what is it? They, they, oh, they were did, rapping they, and They were stuff. rapping and did some type of dance or yeah. something like that. And I was like, and then he wanted more money. But yeah. I didn't, I'm like, dude, you he, know. He, he tried to charge for helping daddy to park the car, but also wanted to charge for the rap performance. Not only for him, but then his but for buddy his as friend, well. I'm like, dude, <laughs> listen, man. I told him, I say, listen, man, think about this for a second. I just gave you such and such amount in Rand, right? I say, how long did your, your rap last? You said uh, about two minutes. I said, I think about that now. The money that I just gave you, you just performed for me for two minutes. Now, how much does a average food service worker or somebody right. that works at the bar around the corner make in yeah. an hour? Yeah. Right? And so he say, he told me how much it was. I don't remember what it was. I said, now think about that. You just made... This amount of money in two minutes Easy for doing money. two minutes of work. Come on, man. Yeah, Y'all yeah. can split this. Right. Right? Right. So that's what it was. And again, I get it. I get it. They you were know, good sports about it. They were good sports. When yeah. he thought about it, right? Yeah. He stopped and thought about it. But sometimes you have to think about those things, people. It's like, come on now. You know, uh, we can we can, we can, can work together and make it a win-win for everybody. Yeah. So, uh but yeah, that's that's what it was. So we 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 went to we went to the Mandela House, and then we actually got taken care of in that situation as well. Yeah, the lady at the front, she 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 took care of her brother. So we we appreciate them. <laughs> uh, you know, it's not that we paid to get in. It's just that she 
she was able to work something out where I was able to get a discount. Yeah. You know, once I was talking to her and stuff like that and told her what we were doing and we were, you know, we had a residence there in Johannesburg South and she was there visiting and stuff like that. So she looked out for us and it was, it was just, it was a good, good experience. So what we did after we left the um, Mandela house, we mm -hmm. decided to go over to Four Ways mm -hmm. Farmer's Market yeah. because that that's popping on the weekends as well. Yeah. So we, we spent some, we went over there. Um, and that was a cool experience. Got a chance to, you know, uh, go into the, the live music area where everybody was chilling, you know, with the hookah and all that kind of stuff. And so, so when, when you saw that, mm -hmm. when we went over to the area, you saw the hookahs on the tables and yeah. people were just chilling and stuff oh, like that. Well, like home. So. <laughs> I stay in the house all the time. They just kicking and chilling. Huh? Love hookah in Atlanta. So, what, what was your impression about just seeing people in South Africa yeah. just kicking it? I really enjoyed it. That was honestly one of my favorite parts of the trip because I could picture myself there, like with my friends. It was cool being able to see everyone just kind of chilling, like they were with their people. Everyone was minding their business, having a good time. There wasn't any like no fights, no bad vibes, and you could tell it was just very genuine. It didn't seem like. Something an issue that we have here sometimes in the states is uh, we can get caught up in appearances and you know you want to give off this certain image and it's like well what is this person doing? You could tell it was just everyone out there having a good time. Um, so I really enjoyed that. The music was great. I really really enjoyed the environment. It was so cool to see. And Joe Burr, tell us. I mean, I, I, is that a is that an accurate assessment? I mean, do you all have? Like issues over there with like when people get together in situations like that where you have things like pretentiousness or people, you know, jockeying for a position like, yo, I'm this, I'm that, you know, I'm running this or I'm all that, that kind of thing. And then beefs between people over petty stuff, yeah. petty nonsensical stuff, right? Yeah. Um, you know, whether it be between women and women or guys or whatever. So that that's just something. Feel free to put something in the comments about that, you know, but if it, if that's what we saw, cause every time I've been there, that's kind of the way it's been too. It's just, mm -hmm. everything is just chill. Yeah. People just, just have a good time. And, and that's, that's cool. Whether even when we were down at Mubble name and yeah. stuff, it was definitely Sunday time. fun day vibes. Yeah. So definitely looking forward to, you know, future times when she's over there. And, and again, my thing was just to introduce her because she, you know, there are going to be times where she's going to be over there and we won't be there. You know, it may be her and some of her friends and, or yeah. whoever you know her her crew or whatever and they're kicking it but i just want to give her a chance to see it you know for the first time i didn't want her first time to see these things and know about these things to to be on her own so you know it may take a couple more times with her going over there and stuff like that but at least she kind of has an idea of the vibe and, and, and those types of things and all the food and the food. shops i bought um a piece of clothing from <laughs> over there that i've already worn it's really nice <laughs> Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I definitely liked that that experience, that area. I would definitely go back. So what was funny about that is that when we were over there shopping, okay, so the the, the lady, the, the sister that, that was selling the she called them kimonos and stuff mm -hmm. like that. It was over in the, the vintage clothes sections, mm -hmm. over near the bathrooms and mm -hmm. stuff at the four ways farmers market. So she was wondering why I didn't take a whole lot of interest into what my daughter was doing. Right, because she was just shuffling through clothes on the racks, looking for stuff like that, and then the the, the, the sister said something to me, and I was like, ah, I, I don't, I don't know. I was like, she got it, yeah, you know, I was like she she's doing her thing or whatever, because I think she asked me what I thought about it or something. Yeah. She was curious something as to why that. I wasn't commenting on yeah. the different things that you were grabbing. You said you liked it and stuff, and I was just like off in the distance, yeah. So I was like, well, why why would I really care, you know, about you know, I was like, she's. She's looking at stuff. She's good and stuff like that. 
So it turns out she thought that I was paying for it, right? And so I told her, I'm like, ah, no, nah, I'm not paying for it. I said, she has her own money, you know? She was appalled by that. <laughs> it's, it seemed, right? <laughs> yeah. She thought, yeah, it, that's right, because she's like... She was like, why not? <laughs> why, why not? I'm yeah. like, I'm like, she has her own money. I'm yeah. like, this is my daughter. I don't, I, you know, she, she's doing well, her see, thing. Well, that, see, that's the thing. When she said, why not, then I realized, because this is something that happens with my father and I all the time when we go out and it's just us and, and my mom is not with us. People think we are a couple, which is gross. I mean, I understand he looks young for his age, but still, it, it grosses me out. So when she reacted that way and she was like, why not? I was like, this is my father. Let's clear this up right now. This is my father. She thought I was, she thought I was her sugar daddy. Yeah. I'm her daddy, all right, but I'm her biological daddy, not right. a sugar daddy. So that that's something that, yeah, that's something yeah. that you have to that you have to get used to. So I, I know I where this it. is going because we've we've had this happen many times when we've gone out. And so I already knew when she reacted that way, I said, Oh, she thinks we're a couple. <laughs> and if that were the case, then okay, that explains why she's acting like that. She's like, Why wouldn't you pay for it? So we, we had to get that out of the way. Yeah. Do you yeah. not see the resemblance? Right, right, exactly. So, uh, so there were other people that thought I was a big brother. I think when we yeah, were at Tasha's, yep, we were at yep, Tasha's, yep. uh, in, uh, we went to the Tasha's in Melrose, in yes, Melrose. Melrose, we went to the Tasha's in Melrose. Yeah. So, yeah, which was, so what do you think about the food at Tasha's? I liked uh, it. The, the vibe. Yeah. All the, all the food that I had was good. Mm -hmm. Everything was delicious. Um, the meat tasted like it wasn't stressed out, you know, like, <laughs> oh, the animals are taken care of over here. That's what it tasted like to me. Everything was fresh. Yeah. The service was great. Mm -hmm. Ah. So that was so that wonderful. was so that was <clears throat> what we did. That we did get a chance to go to Tasha's because I wanted her to to be familiar with that. I like <clears throat> the ambiance in there too. Yeah, yeah. Very. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a nice vibe. Yeah. <clears throat> so um, let's see. Other things we did for the most part beyond that, uh, it came down to estate life. Uh, you know, the state that we, that we, that our residence is on. Um, and we just kind of did malls. We did take in, uh, the next day. So we, we had a couple pieces of business to take care of, basically just like getting bank accounts set up for her there, you know, since she's going to have some type of future there, you know, we want to just be able to bank like everybody else and stuff like that, go to the ATM, that type of thing. So, but we do have some challenges with that, that she's still dealing still with. Still dealing with. F <sighs> FMB. Email gotta, me back, please. You got to get, get it together, <laughs> FNB. And if anybody that comes across this works for FNB, uh, put something in the comments to help us out because we got to get we got to get this thing uh, resolved with her with the uh, with the with the account. It's the phone number thing. Yeah, because so, we didn't have a South African phone. Number yeah, their their they system the isn't there. really, I guess. Um, amenable to us area codes right, exactly. um and so my my phone number of course has a u.s area code it's a u.s number but their system is set up to where they think it's a south african number right. so of course when i do my two-factor authentication it's trying to go to a south african number but i don't have that so still still so we'll, we'll get that, that worked out once she's on the ground there next yeah. time i guess we'll go back to that yeah. Uh, the only thing is, I guess, with the account not being able to online bank. Uh, you know, I think what we'll do is we'll call. Yeah. Because I have calling call on my phone. Yeah. We'll call them and actually work with them over the phone yeah. to, to get back. We just got to we just got to get your, your schedule worked out right. to when you're off one it's day. The, the time difference is exactly. the thing because it was, I thought about it the other day. But by the time I thought about it, I was like, oh, well, they're definitely closed now because yeah. you all are six hours ahead. Exactly. So. So if we get them on a phone call, we, I think we can work with a representative to, mm -hmm. to get through that. So there, there's still hope for that. We can get that totally in place for her and she can start using that account. So other than that, we just took that and then we, we went to build a square that day mm -hmm. uh, so that she can see, you know, what what their what the equivalent of like Home Depot or, Low, or Lowe's is over there. And, and we bought, and it was off, it's off season now because we have opposite seasons. We, we went and got a couple of heaters, like space heaters. Uh, for our place so that we can have in which we were looking around and we couldn't find them. We were yeah. like, why can't we find heaters? You right. know? And it turns out they're off season. And so 
they move all that stuff to the back of the ones that they still have in stock. And I was surprised yeah. when she was, I was like, no, nah, we can just wait until yes. come on. Win, win, winter time, <laughs> when winter comes back around yeah. here, then we'll come back and buy them. Because the only thing they're doing now, they just store it away, yeah. you know, in, in the cubbies and stuff now at the place. Yeah. But she was like, she was not going to let us leave yeah. that store without she selling us took a heater. us to the back of the store. Took, like we were employees. I'm yeah. like, isn't this the employee area? We're yeah. not supposed to be back here. But, uh, she took us back there and sold us a couple heaters. We, we pulled them out of the stack from the yeah. storage area back there. And they sold us those damn heaters, man. I'm telling you. We got what we needed. Yeah, <laughs> we got what we needed. So we, we tucked those away. Uh, and, and that was cool. And so that was pretty much like the business stuff that we wanted to take care of. And from there, it was just just the malls. We just visited the malls and we just ate and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, we got a chance to use the, the, the fitness center on the estate. Yeah. And okay, Very so nice. here is here's a interesting story about that whole thing. So we we went oh, hold on a second. So we we you we both worked out at the gym one day and then the next day we were gonna go back because she was gonna do you were gonna do a, a spa, spa mm -hmm. treatment, visit the spa, mm -hmm. and then you were gonna work out. So turns out that because of this six hour difference things, we had our, our presidential debate that took place. Vice presidential. Vice, that was the presidential debate. Kamala's the vice president, but she was debating no, Trump. No. Oh, that was the vice president. It yeah, was, you're right. You're right. That's right. And, it was a it was a yeah. vice president vice presidential debate that I wanted to watch. Yeah. And so I stayed up watching that. So it was really late uh, in Johannesburg because they're six hours ahead of the United States. So I stayed up late, and I wasn't able to go to the fitness center or the gym with her the next morning. So I just told her, "You just go ahead. And I'll just sleep in or whatever." So. She was going to walk to the gym because she, while she can drive a manual transmission, she's not used to driving on the right side of the vehicle, left side of the road there. So, you know, she wasn't able to drive the car. She could have, but it would have been a little bit painful. Also, it, it, it's a short walk. It, it was a, a five-minute walk. walk. Exactly. So I really didn't mind walking. Exactly. So she walked to the fitness center on the estate. So turns out, now here's what I expected. The doors, as you all know, most of the door. I don't know if everybody's stuff is like this, but um, the door is locked from the inside, which means you have to have a key to stick inside from inside the unit in order to lock and unlock the door. So we only took one set of our keys over there because we only expected to have one vehicle. You know, we didn't need two sets of keys. She took the keys to the uh, to, to the, the gym. to to the well to the house. Oh, you, you should, took the oh, keys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I you took, took the, the keys, keys out of the to the door. house because she was walking over there and yeah. I was asleep. Yeah. So I'm sleeping. I thought nothing of that. By she the didn't way. think. Think she didn't think anything. I of forgot it. it locks from the inside. Exactly. She forgot that it locks from the inside. So yeah. I'm basically trapped in the house. Can't get out and because we're up on. We're up. I can't get down out of the house. So I get this alert on my cell phone. The alert is an SOS. It's an SOS, an emergency alert on my phone. And so I'm thinking, okay, why am I getting this SOS on my phone? Now, mind you, I can't do anything about it because she has the keys that has the key to the house and the keys to the car on there. Right? Was the keys to the car on that same one? I can't. Or maybe it was, maybe it was just key to the house. Yeah, I think it was just. That. But nevertheless, she had the keys to the house, so no matter what happens, I can't get out the house. I have my cell phone, and so the first thing that I think is I'll send her a text message. Sent her a text message. No response to the text message. Now I'm really getting nervous. Then so I'm thinking, okay, arm um, response. Do I call the front security gate? And let them know to find out, to ask if they've seen her walk past them or whatever. Because at this point, I'm thinking abduction, right? I'm thinking my daughter's gone out of here. We're in a foreign country because we are. And she's been abducted. And I have within no... Within a span of five minutes. <laughs> exactly, within a span of five minutes. And I have no way to reach her. She's not responding I call the front gate and I'm explaining to them what's going on and I asked if they seen her or that type of thing. They had not because they 
they have no reason to be looking for anybody, right? They're just going about their day. And so I'm just really, really in a bad state right now because I don't know what to do. I can't get out the house. Um, there's really nothing I can do. I know nobody there, none of my neighbors. I can't reach any of them because I'm trapped in the house. Um, so I'm just like, at this point, I'm just kind of like just praying at this point. I'm like, man, I'm going to give it a little more time and see what's going on. Or I'll call them back in a second. You know, if I don't hear back from her, then I'm on the call for some armed response or whatever, the police or whatever to, to, to see. So we can get on this and I got to try to get out of this house somehow. So anyway, so I'm just kind of reliving this in my mind right now. So you finally reached me. Yeah, so this is what happened from my point of view. So, you know, I, again, I leave out the house completely forgetting that it locks from the inside. So I take the keys with me. I have a drawstring bag that has all of my, my gym stuff in it. And I threw my phone in there because I'm thinking, oh, I don't need to have my phone in my hand just to walk up to the gym. And I had my water bottle in there and everything. So those of you who have iPhones might know that there is a setting where if your lock button is pressed five times consecutively, it's going to send out an emergency SOS automatically to your contact, to your emergency contacts to say that you're in distress. Um, I forgot that this setting was on. So apparently everything was jostling around in my bag in just the right way to press that button five times. And so I'm just do do do, you know, walk to the gym. I'm enjoying the weather. I'm enjoying the views. And right when I get out outside of the gym, I go in my bag and I take my phone out only because we have the most beautiful view of like the mountain range from, from where we stay. And so I was like, man, I got to get a video of this. So I pull my phone out, getting ready to, and I look and I have a message saying, your emergency contacts have been contacted. And I was like, huh, what are you talking about? And so then I see I had a, a, a text from my dad, a missed call from my dad, and a, a frantic voicemail from my dad. <laughs> and I was like, oh no, he thinks something is wrong. So then I, I had to call him back like, hey, I'm okay. I, I just, I'm about to walk into the gym now. So, hey. I, I, was, I was really mad. I wanted, to, I wanted to curse her out so bad. Because, I mean, imagine yourself being in that situation, right? Yeah. Well, those, those, that was the longest, probably 10 minutes of my life. I felt terrible. So, that's that's what it was. Yeah. But, so, we got through that. I'm clearly here. <laughs> unabducted. Woo, man. So, anyway. That's that. That's the end of that. <laughs> that's the craziest part of our trip. Yeah. That's the, actual, the absolute craziest part of our trip. And probably the worst part of our trip. So, you can see now... Just hearing all that you have thus far, this the trip was just crazy, right? Uh, so from there, we just the rest of our trip, we we visited the malls. We, I took her to Santon City. Uh, we didn't get a chance to drive around Santon a whole lot. I really wanted to show her because again, we were just it just um, seemed to be it. nonstop. Yeah. I mean, we just had a, a couple, a good two and a half, three days to to see stuff. And so we went to Sanson City, and the goal was to kind of do some shopping. She wanted to look for some some eyeglass frames and stuff. That turned out to be a bust because yeah. we didn't see really what we wanted to see. But if if, if y'all can tell us where the what the cool eyeglass frames are and stuff yeah, like that, yeah, something funky. So the, in the future, when she goes, she can she can find it. That'll be great. But it was like looking for eyeglass frames and my football jerseys. That was the whole idea because the only ones that I had had thus far, I had only had one. Um, sundowns jersey and so i wanted to go you know look for look for uh, some of the other jerseys especially considering like i said we repping j j Burr, j joe Burr south um so yeah so we want to go out and look for that and then just just kind of give her an opportunity to see how huge and massive the malls are in huge. south africa compared to here and we didn't even nowhere near get a chance to really walk through the malls and really see stuff uh, but we did did get a chance to visit uh, Santon City took her out into Mandela Square, got her photo in front of the big Mandela statue mm -hmm. and stuff there. Uh, and then we went from there uh, out to a Mall of Africa, uh, you know, out in Waterfall. Got a chance to see that. So, you know, we walked into the mall. That was the day that this would have been on the 1st of October. And mm -hmm. something that we noticed, there were long lines in front of all the banks yeah. when we went. So kind of tell us what, what, what that, what the first of the month, if there's any particular 
thing special about that yeah. day. Every single bank had, had a long, long, long line. Like, oh, I was like, my goodness, these people yeah. are probably waiting for hours yeah. in, in these lines. So, so it's probably some type of disbursement and stuff like yeah. that or something like that. So if, if y'all can just kind of give us an idea of, of what that is, yeah. uh, that, that would be cool you know, for our future reference because obviously we're going to going to see that you know in the, in the future as we're there on a more regular basis <clears throat> but uh, walked through the mall went looking for jerseys and stuff like that uh we went into i forget the one place we went into but we we found jerseys and stuff uh, but we could not find we could not find that orlando pirates jersey man we were looking all around for it and we just got to a point where uh, I was trying to contemplate, well, which ones am I going to buy? Because I know how it is over there. And, you know, I saw this one and it kind of jumped out at me because I thought it was kind of cool. This actually reminds me somewhat of like one of the throwback jerseys for like the Pittsburgh Steelers. Oh, uh, yeah. Because um, I've seen one of their throwback jerseys. Yeah. And it, it's kind of has a similar, this is their yeah. colors. The, the Pittsburgh Steelers football team, American, American football, football here. Yeah. So this kind of reminded me of that. Um, and then, of course, they had. They had a, a Sundowns jersey as well, the bright yellow Sundowns jersey. So I ended up getting that one. So I was like, ah, we're going to end up leaving. I'm not going to have the Orlando Pirates jersey. And so on our way out the mall, we walked past, I think it's called Studio 8. I think it, it was. And we were walking past. You you saw it? Yeah. So I said, I saw that there were some jerseys in there because we've been in multiple stores at this point looking for that jersey and, and could not find anything and so we were literally leaving the mall i see that there's some jerseys in this one last store so i was like hey let's just maybe pop in here one last shot sure enough and it was the color was, yeah that it, stuck out yeah. I, I was looking for a black jersey yeah because the last one that i saw was the black one yeah so i was really surprised i'm like oh let's go look at it and i yeah. pulled it back yeah i was all like this is cool yeah this is cool so i was like yeah we're going to snatch this one up and uh, yeah, that, that's what it was. So we, we were able to land that jersey. So I ended up leaving South Africa with three, three jerseys. jerseys. Mm -hmm. So now I got I got two Sundowns. I got this Kaiser jersey. I got the Orlando Pirates. And then of course I have my my uh, Springboks rugby jersey, right? So yeah, so that was pretty much it. And then from there, it was just, we just, you know, we just enjoyed our time at our little place there on the estate eating at the restaurant on the estate. Uh, we went out dining. We, we went to uh, to Rosebank um, and had dinner at... Um, 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 Grill uh, House? Grill House. Yeah. At Grill House. That was now, delicious. That was really nice. Yeah. That was a really nice place. Um, she couldn't believe... The price how inex of everything. How inexpensive it was. Yeah. Because <laughs> we, we, we ate pretty good. This would be good. Thank you. Wow. Enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. We got two appetizers, and it's not like they're. I got bone marrow. You got muzzles, right? In in the states, this stuff would be so expensive. Um, yeah, I filet. got a filet mignon. He had like a full rack of spare ribs. Yeah. We both got glasses of wine and, and they gave us a generous pour and we both got desserts. So when we did that calculation and the conversion, that ended up being like 66 60 US bucks, dollars. 60 some dollars US Which dollars. again, for one of those items, like for a filet mignon alone, I could I could have paid sixty six dollars just for one item. So the fact that we got all of that for that price and it was delicious, it was so good. About eleven hundred rand, just under twelve hundred rand. I think it yeah. probably would have equated to yeah something like that. I so, was yeah. blown away. Yeah, can't beat that. So yeah, so she got a chance to experience, yeah. you know, South Africa, you know, from that from the culinary perspective and enjoy the food and and to compare it, yeah, you know, to the to the United States, yeah. like how how ridiculously expensive. Yeah, it is over here for food, and it's and the quality is not even guaranteed over here. Exactly. Um, because again, like you could taste the freshness. I was like, wow. Again, the, these cows were treated well before they and just had the, to go. I could tell. <laughs> and just the care that they put into the preparation. Yeah, of food they're probably and not stuff. pumping them full of 
God knows what. Like, yeah. You know. like the pre preparation. <laughs> I'm talking preparation. The food prep. Oh, food yeah. Food preparation that at the restaurant. Yeah. Like, everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Top top class. Man. Yeah. And, and you don't. You don't get that in. When you do get it, you pay you for pay it. You pay for it. That's for everybody who always talk about, oh, I want to go to the United States. You know, everything is relative, yeah. man. I mean, you get over here and you, it's stuff is ridiculously expensive and it's not quite the, not necessarily the quality that you have. Yeah. And you all take a lot of things for granted over there. You really do. You take a lot of things for granted because of uh, what you're fed image-wise from yeah. over here. A lot of things that you take for granted over there and i'm sure there are things that we take for granted here that when we go to different parts of the world and stuff like that you know but the idea is that every all things are relative sometimes yeah. we have to take a second i think and just really realize some of the the good things you know in our lives that we have that, that we, yeah. we kind of discount and it yeah. takes sometimes other people to kind of to, to bring that to light yeah um, I have something random, okay. uh, kind of on on that same vein of like things you take for granted. Something right. that I could easily compare um, between there and here is the cleanliness of the bathrooms. Over there, mm -hmm. every single bathroom I went into, every single public restroom I went into was clean, and there were people in there cleaning constantly. Mm -hmm. Over here, I'm I'm afraid to use use public restrooms over here because when I walk in there, I don't know what's gonna be waiting for me when I open up that door. Over there, everything was so clean, okay. so clean. I don't really That's something to, small, but I guess as a for woman, women, you, you know, yes. for, for a dude, it's like ah. Give me some place. It didn't matter where I went. It was a clean bathroom that I was okay with using. So, well, there oh, you go. You don't get there that over here. There you go. So. Yeah, so that was, that was pretty much our trip. And then the trip back, you know, we, we flew Qatar Airways back and we flew through Qatar, this time Doha, Qatar. Coming back uneventful. Yeah. You know, it was it was a flight back. We went there. We caught our connecting flight, came back to Atlanta, and it was back to life, yep. back to reality up in this piece yep the us of a and we all know what has transpired since that time and uh but i so i wanted to come out and just revisit our our trip there uh me and the daughters uh and yeah so now we have all been there we know what it is we've seen our place there it's a lovely place and we can now all look forward to going back you know, either together or on our own and yeah. spend time with our friends and stuff and get a chance to enjoy our place with our friends and our family and our South African family and get a chance to enjoy Joburg and even branch out from there, you know, to, to do some, some, some travels, maybe to Cape Town or Durban yeah. or even some of the neighboring countries in the future. So this is, this is the start, right? Uh, though we started, you know, a couple of years ago now. Uh, we just have to keep building upon upon things, and of course, we have our journey that we're we're doing. So I thought it was would be great to just come out and just you know give you all a chance to meet another member of the family. A little and delayed, but here we are. A little delayed, but better here, late than never. Here we are, and uh, you know I'm sure she's going to have many opportunities to enjoy herself over there in the future because yes. her buddies and her crew, you know the millennials and everything, uh, they, they traveled over there doing their thing you know some of them are going to Cape Town some of them are going to Joburg and stuff and so I imagine in the future that they'll get a chance to come over there and kick it with the peeps yeah. you know the millennials and the Gen Zers and stuff like that <laughs> you know to have a chance to uh you know to experience you know South Africa and Johannesburg in its fullness in the way that you know y'all like to get down or whatever so that's pretty much it so any thoughts any as we close up I think that's about it for me. I can't wait to come back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm flying Delta next time. <laughs> all right. So, uh, yeah. So, man, we appreciate you all uh, tuning in to us. The last episode and all the commentary that we had, uh, you know, and, and we hope to have uh, some robust conversation uh, this time. Go around. Feel free to comment. And I put um, told myself I was going to do a a reminder to like, share, subscribe on our videos. And as always, I have to get to the end. I need to say that at the beginning because, you know, content creators, they do it all. That's like the first thing they get out of the way. Huh? Put a little bubble. Put a little bubble up there. Uh, but yeah, because, uh, you know, if you if you have somebody that don't make it all, all the way to the end of your yeah. video, they're going to miss that part and you're going to fall by the wayside. But I guess that's yeah. why I'm kind of a crappy content creator. <laughs> 
you know, because my motivation is not, my motivation is just to genuinely share with yeah. people. So a lot of times I'm excited about that. I just get into stuff. Yeah. And I don't think to, to do the selfish thing, be like, hey, like, share, subscribe my video so I can get, so we can get clicks and the algorithm and all that yeah. kind of stuff because we're trying to make money off the channel. And right. That's not even my motivation, man. It's just like we just like sharing with people our experiences and those types of things. And, you know, as we go along, that's our thing. This thing doesn't pay my bills. Uh, you know, so that that's what it is. But yeah, do like, share, subscribe, you know, and we appreciate y'all, uh, the attention that you give us and, and sharing in these moments with us. And we hope to just continue to have content as we have thoughts about this whole thing because our journey is different from a lot of people, a lot of content creators that came from the United States and that are on the ground there in South Africa. You know, we all offer something different. And so uh, I'm, I'm, I'm cool with, you know, the approach, you know, that we take because, you know, just just have it to be genuine yeah. you know as we move through things so we appreciate y'all and, and the time spending this time with y'all and we look forward to seeing y'all next time and uh y'all take care all right peace <laughs> all right that's a wrap all righty all right